Good morning. Today I'm going to read from a book that really surprised me. Um, I, when I started this book and read the description and everything, I, I thought it was going to be really sentimental and kind of sappy. <clears throat> and instead it was absolutely beautiful. It's called The Snow Child. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce the name right, probably, but it's Yoen Ivy, I think. <clears throat> um, and I'm not even going to try to describe this book. It's um, very unique. Chapter 1 takes place in Wolverine River, Alaska, 1920. Mabel had known there would be silence. That was the point, after all. No infants cooing or wailing. No neighbor children playfully hollering down the lane. No pad of small feet on wooden stairs worn smooth by generations or clackety-clack of toys along the kitchen floor. All those sounds of her failure and regret would be left behind, and in her, their place there would be silence. She had imagined that in the Alaska wilderness, silence would be peaceful, like snow falling at night, air filled with promise but no sound, but that was not what she found. Instead, when she swept the plank floor, the broom bristles stretched along some sharp-toothed shrew nibbling at her heart, like some sharp-toothed toothed shrew. <clears throat> when she washed the dishes, plates and bowls clattered as if they were breaking to pieces. The only sound not of her making was a sudden caw, caw from outside. Mabel wrung dishwater from a rag and looked out the window, the kitchen window, in time to see a raven flapping its way from one leafless birch tree to another. No children chasing each other through autumn leaves, calling each other's names. Not even a solitary child on a swing. <clears throat> There had been there had been the one, a tiny thing, born still and silent. Ten years passed, but even now she found herself returning to the berth to touch Jack's arm, stop him, reach out. They should have. She should have. She should have cupped the baby's head in the palm of her hand and snipped a few of its tiny hairs to keep in a locket on her throat. She should have looked into its small face and known if it was a boy or a girl, and then stood behind, beside Jack as he buried it in the Pennsylvania winter ground. She should have marked its grave. She should have allowed herself that grief. It was a child, after all, although it looked more like a fairy changeling, pinched face, tiny jaw, ears that came to narrow points. That much she had seen and wept over because she knew she could have loved it still. Mabel was too long at the window. The raven had since flown away over the treetops. The sun had slipped behind a mountain and the light had fallen flat. The branches were bare, the grass yellowed gray, not a single snowflake. It was as if everything fine and glittering had been ground from the world and swept away as dust. <clears throat> the Snow Child have a good day.